Hi, my name is Kristen Gunderson, and I am the founder of Gunderson CFO and Bookkeeping, and I'm really excited to be here and be able to uh, do this training with you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about KPIs today. Um, Okay, so what we're going to cover in this training is why KPIs are important to your business, how, what different KPIs you can be measuring, and how to incorporate KPIs into your culture. So how to know what KPIs to use in your business. So every single business is different and every industry is different. So I want you to keep that in mind while you're while we're going through this training. But the most important thing that you can do is you can ask yourself, what are the three most important things that I need to start measuring in my business that will mean that I'm winning? So as I'm going through the KPIs, that's what I'm going to go through next is some KPIs. I want you to make a note of, okay, this one's really important. This is one that I'd like to start implementing in my business. So you may be asking, what is a KPI? A KPI is a key performance indicator. So uh, just keep that in mind. So there are different indicators that you might wanna be keeping track of. There's lagging indicators and there's leading indicators and both of them are really important. The lagging indicators are everything that you can pull from like your financials. Like it's what's happened in the past, it's history, but it's really important because you need to know where you have been uh, for that you know where you are going, right? And a leading indicator is it predicts the future conditions of your business. Um, so a lot of those will be marketing and conversion rates. So, but I'll go over that more um, in a little bit, but just keep in mind, you don't wanna be keeping track of just all lagging indicators. You don't wanna be keeping track of all leading indicators. You need to have a mixture of both. So some <clears throat> lagging indicators that are important uh, are your, key liquidity KPIs. So there's the current ratio, which basically is how much cash is needed to meet short-term obligations. There's the quick ratio. Do you have liquid assets available to be able to cover your short-term obligations? There's the, the cash ratio. Can you pay your debts using the cash that you have in your business? And then days of working capital. So this is how long you will be able to survive after paying all of your current liabilities and a business should have at least 30 days of working capital. And for like a current and a quick ratio, um, it needs to be above a one or one, 1 1.5. But um, once you, if you decide that you're gonna start keeping track of that, that's stuff that you can Google. What is a good current ratio for my business or my industry? What is a good quick ratio for my business or, or industry? Another really important thing, um, KPI to start measuring is your top line growth. We always want to compare revenue growth to previous periods. So like when I'm looking at revenue, I look at the whole year, month by month to see, are we growing? Are we staying the same? Another um, one you want to look at is you want to look over the previous period. So um, you can look at quarters like this quarter versus last quarter, but I also like to look at January of this year versus January of last year, February of this year versus February of last year. That way you can see um, the growth trends, like you're really trying to figure out where the growth trends are. And this is especially important if you have a seasonal business, because seasonal business um, say you have a lawn care business. I'm going to use that example a lot today. If you have a lawn care business, obviously the sales should be higher in the summer months. And you might need to figure out what to do in the winter months. Like maybe if you can see um, things die down and you want to keep that top talent that you've taken the time to train, maybe you're, you can decide to hang Christmas lights in the fall and winter before Christmas time, maybe that's a way to get revenue up to keep that talent that you've spent time training, right? So 
So, and then the other thing is, is you want to measure KPIs by product or service line. So say the lawn care business, right? You may have weekly lawn care maintenance that you're just going out to cut the grass. Like we want to measure that year over year, month over month. Um, and then maybe you have a gardening, like people want gardening done or so that's another line of product services that you offer. Or maybe there's new new garden setups, like maybe um, they want you to completely replace all of all the shrubs and the flowers in the gardens. Like that, that would be a new setup instead of just like a weekly maintenance of going to pull the weeds. So I would keep track of that, that revenue by product line also. And then another thing you want to keep track of is your revenue growth rate. So how much are you growing month over month or this period over the, the prior period and how and how you calculate that as you take the difference in revenue between those two periods that you're you're trying to do, um, figure the growth rate out for, and then you, you divide it by the revenue in the earlier time period and you times it by 100. So, uh, and I also do this for uh, new customers, um, not just the revenue, like how many new customers that we have. So that's another way you can calculate it um, how many customers that you have. Okay, financial efficiency KPIs. So this would be your return on investments, your return on equity, your return on assets. And when we're we're talking about this, we need to know what a return on an asset is and we're gonna use the lawn care business again. Like, I think that we need to create a whole new, um, we're so busy that we need to get, we need to add on a whole new, um, a second, a second set of people. So that would mean we would need to hire um, two new people that has nothing to do with return on assets. The assets we would need to hire the two new people would be we need a truck for them. We would need a new uh, zero turn lawnmower. We'd need a weed eater. We would need a, a blower. Like those are the, the key things that I think like a lawn, um, another crew would need in order to do that. So we would need to be able to calculate Okay, so all of those that equipment should be good for five years. Um, so what would that return on that asset be if we were to buy all that stuff or um, a return on investment? That might be, you know what, we're getting so big. I can't store this equipment in my garage anymore. We're going to need to rent a storage unit to be able to store all this stuff or maybe buy the building. That would probably be a, a big, uh, better example. Go ahead and buying um, a warehouse to be able to store all of this equipment for uh, my lawn care crew, right? So what would that return on investment be? And I want you to make sure to know, um, make sure you don't confuse annual and annualized returns. So the annual rate of return is over a one-year period where the annualized rate of return is Again, like those assets would be good for five years. We need to do an annualized rate of return over five years for that. Um, if the, the buildings are, um, buildings I think normally are 28 or 30 years, they're good for. So we would need to annualize, what would the annualized rate of return be, return be for that building over 30 years? So an example of a one month re, uh, return on inv investment of 2% would be stated as an annualized rate of return of 24%. Just, just so that you got those terminologies down. Okay, <clears throat> another thing to keep track of is how happy are your customers? Um, this is this is really big. If we don't have happy customers, we have a dying business. Um, so use the net promoter score, NPS metric to find out. So one of the easiest, best questions that you can ask your clients is how likely would you be able to recommend our company or our product to your friend or colleague? Like if you have lots of referrals coming in and people are referring you, that's a good indication that your clients are happy. If your referral rate is down, um, you may need to take a look at what can you do, be doing to add value, what to your clients, what can you do to increase their happiness that they'll actually start referring you, right? So your NPS lets you categorize your customers into one of these three categories. Are your are your customers promoters? They're actively um, 
promoting you and sharing you on, you know, social media, giving you reviews, um, telling their friends about you. Those are crucial for growth. We want, we definitely want to keep those happy. The ones who are passive, they, they don't do anything. They don't say anything negative. They don't say anything good, but they definitely don't say, Hey, um, my, you know, my lawn care company is XYZ lawn care. They're great. Um, they're just, they don't say anything. Um, and then we have detractors. So those are the people who, if you do one thing wrong, like you cut the grass a half an inch too short that day, they, they're they going to tell everyone. And remember, normally customers, if they're happy with you, they tell like one person. And if they're unhappy with you, they tell like 10 people. So this is going to slow your growth rate down if you have detractors uh, for, for customers. So we definitely want to minimize those and keep those to a minimum. And, and always there's those few that you just can't make happy, but you know what, you're the business owner um, or the decision maker. You can, you can determine who your customers are. Like you don't be afraid to fire customers. Um, and that, that's a whole nother topic, but um, you definitely want to be working with people that you enjoy working with. So, and normally it goes both ways. If you're happy, they're happy. So um, when combined with appropriate diagnostic and follow-up actions, NPS can drive significant improvement in customer loyalty and enable profitable, profitable growth. So some cut um, KPIs for this, and this is leading uh, customer retention. So we want to keep track of what your customer retention rate is, that CRR, and what your customer turnover rate is. And the reason why this is so important is because it's a lot easier and cheaper to find existing customers and maybe add on services or products that they will use than to find new ones. And it, the little um, picture over on the right, like um, increasing your customer retention rates by just 5% will increase your profits by 25 to 95%. Like that's huge. Um, and the prof the probability of converting an existing customer is 60 to 70%. Whereas the probability of com like converting a new customer is five to 20% for a new prospect, right? Um, repeat customers spend 33% more than the existing um, ones do. So, I mean, definitely wanna make sure that our current customers are happy. Um, 80 percent of all your future profits come from just 20 percent of your existing customers. That, that's the 80, 20 percent rule. So we definitely want to make sure that we're keeping track of um, our customer retention rate and our customer turnover rate. So turnover me like um, so it's how many we're losing, right? And you want to keep track of this if you're in a month by month, like we need to keep track of how many new customers you have per month and how many you're losing per month. And but if you have an annual business, like say you do the, the Christmas lights or you do tax returns or something, that's a once a year client. So that would be a, a yearly um, customer retention rate that you want to keep track of how many, you're, um, how many you're keeping. And then the ultimate customer KPI to keep track of is what is the customer's lifetime value? And down at the bottom, I have the how to do that. But basically, you, you take the average transaction size times how many transactions you do with that client times the retention period. That will give you the CLV. And actually, if you say we have the lawn care business and then we're doing the Christmas lights too, I would keep track of, and especially if the price differences differ a lot, like, or you have a medium, um, product line, you have a low end product line, and you have a high end product line, I would do the CLV per each product line so that you know um, what to anticipate, like what the length of the client will be, um, how much the revenue you'll be bringing in for that client. And what the CLV can do is it can help you understand how much you can invest in acquiring and retaining customers so that you would achieve a positive return on investment. Um, this metric can also help assess present and future health of your business. Again, this is a leading indicator. So if you don't know this, this is one thing that I would challenge you to calculate to figure out um, what is your customer lifetime value. 
All right, so then there's market KPIs. And the market KPIs, it's, it's where you are with your competition, okay? So say you have a lawn care business, but there's also three other lawn care businesses in, in town that you're competing against. So we wanna know what your market share is um, for your industry, um, for the lawn care business, right? What's your market share? And then like a market growth rate, like are you growing? Um, which would be good. Like, are you gaining on that market share in your, in your town? Or if you're, you know, you might be global or in the, um, the whole United States. So whatever that market share is, um, or is it, you know, staying the same or are you declining? I mean, those are, those are really important things to be keeping track of. And then, and then your market success. So this goes into sales and marketing, how successful you are in converting leads into customers. And um, so I have a digiting marketing funnel. So these are just things that you can keep track of. And again, um, the majority of these would be all leading indicators. So some things that you do want to look at, especially for marketing is leads generated. Like how, how many leads are you generating from wherever you're, mar you're advertising, right? Um, it could be you're on social media. It could be you're doing newspaper. It could be uh, you have a billboard. Um, you're sending out flyers, like whatever it is, like we need to keep track of by where you're marketing, what, how many leads you're generating from that. And then how many you're converting? Like how many of those leads turn into um, estimates that they're asking for and how many of those estimates turn into customers. Those are really important uh, numbers to know because if we know, um, like when we're doing our budgeting and our um, forecasting for the next year, we want to grow. We want to grow at least 30% year over year. That way we're turning the, the trend like this. Like we need, um, we want our growth to be at least 30%. That's a really good goal. I mean, 10%, you know, I mean, that might, some people might be happy with the 10%, but no, like, especially if you want to sell your business, like if you have the end in mind, like five, 10 years down the road, we need to be able to show like your business is doing stuff. Like you've been able to bend that growth curve. So like, if you know, at the end, like we need, to, I need to increase my revenue. Um, whatever 30% is, um, say, I don't know, it's $100,000. And, and then we can be like, okay, our, our, uh, our average client uh, CLV is, I don't know, $10,000 a year. We would know um, that I think if I have the numbers like, right, um, we need 10 new clients or something like that. And I may, may be jumbling my numbers, but you can see how we can back into that. So if we need 10 new clients, then we can be like, okay, so if we know what our conversion rate is, we know, okay, so we need to, 10 new clients means that we need to have 30, um, we need to have 30 meetings with clients. And then, um, and then like, maybe we know that we need to have like a hundred leads, like quality leads. So if we know what our leads generated is and how, how it's converting, we can literally back into our growth numbers when we're forecasting for the year and budgeting, we can be like, oh, okay, this is how many people we need to set a goal for to talk to. And so that's, that's why these numbers are important. Like if you don't know these numbers, um, you're not measuring anything and you're not going to be growing. Um, okay. So then like, if you have website traffic and engagement, like you want to monitor how many visitors you have on your website um, and track metrics, like how many page views you have, are they dropping off at a certain page? How many time is spent on the site? And what is the bounce rate? Like, where are they dropping off? And then you can be like, okay, so if you're keeping track of these and looking at them, you can be like, okay, so um, this is the website, this is the page where they're falling off. Or, or they're not clicking through to, you know what, let's go ahead and click, click the make a meeting or buy a product or whatever. Like there's something wrong with the wording on this. We need to take it back to the website design people and be like, reword this. Like we need to start playing with this. Um, but that's what you're using these for is, and then like if you, your number of visitors is going down, 
then what are you doing to get people to the page? Like, or, and then if they only go to the first page, something's wrong with the, the, the landing page, right? So that's why we're keeping track of this so that we know if our marketing needs to change and improve and, and do some testing. And there's, they, they always talk about AB testing. So that's why you're keeping track of this. And then, especially if you have an e-commerce business where people are going to your website and buying stuff, the one thing that you want to look at here is cart abandonment rate. So this will be where it measures the number of visitors who have added items to their shopping cart, but they leave the website without completing the purchase. So we need to know, is this number going up? Is it staying the same? Is it declining? And if it's going up, um, something's wrong. Um, we need, need to figure out, like, maybe checking out isn't as easy as it could be. Maybe it's too difficult uh, for the customers to actually hit the buy button and, and start getting the stuff shipped, right? And then social media engagement metrics, um, like, start keeping track of how many likes you have, how many shares, how many comments, and then how many are clicking through to, say, other social media um, sites. And... Social media, you can have all the likes and comments and stuff that you want, but if it's not converting to purchases, then your social media um, marketing plan needs to change. You need to change things up. So constantly be looking at this stuff, I would say even weekly, but that you can make timely changes um, to move your business forward. Okay, so another um, thing that we need to talk about is project performance KPIs. So these are for say like construction companies or any com companies that have large product projects that take months or years to complete. So if you fail to monitor these project performances along the way, you are likely to go over your timeline and or over your budget. So, and that's definitely like one bad project could kill a company, um, set it into bankruptcy, right? So you definitely, if, if you're like a construction company who has projects or any big company that has projects that last a while, these are some things that you want to keep track of. So the, the questions that you need to ask for projects are, is it on schedule? Is it within budget? And is it delivering the specified outcomes to the client? So the KPIs that you want to keep track on of this are... For the schedule one, you want to keep track of a project schedule variance KPI. For on budget, you want to be able to do project cost variance KPI. And then an, another key one is bid accuracy. So you want to be able to, is the bid that you bidded the client and what they accepted is how is it going to the actual that's coming out? So you want to have a margin realized variance bid KPI that you're looking at. Okay, so KPIs and culture. So this one's really important to me because people are your very most important asset that you have in your business. And they're also your biggest cost. So we need to make sure that we know that our team is happy, that they're being productive and that they're engaged. And actually I'm going to do another uh, training video on what we use uh, to be able to determine this. Um, so, what, what we want to do is our employees, they generate value to our business. So one of the KPIs that I think is really important that you start looking at is how much revenue per employee are they calculate? Like, are they bringing in? And, and so there's a general revenue and per employee, like, you would know, like, oh, okay, like each employee brings in $200,000 a year. That way, you know, like how much we can pay them. And, I mean, so those are important. Um, you also might want to keep track of your EBITDA per employee. Um, and less than half of businesses actively track employee generated value, which is pretty sad. Um, if if they don't know those numbers, um, how how can how can you grow and know? what's going on, right? So don't be like them. Do not be like half of the business that do not track this. Be a data-driven empire builder, okay? All right, how to attract and retain top talent. 
So recruiting is expensive. It gets more costly when you get it wrong. Um, so how good is your business at attracting and keeping talent? So one thing that you can be keeping track of for like an HR department is, is performing, um, how well they're performing is when it comes to recruiting and training. So you can use a time to hire measure, how good HR is finding a talent, like is it taking them a month to find good talent? Is it taking them three months or six months? Um, so, so that's one to keep in mind. And then you can use KPIs like salary competitiveness rate. What is your employee churn rate? What's the absentee rate? What's the average tenure? To determine how well you retain your client, your, your talent. So metrics are great, but we can do more. Companies that use metrics grow faster than those who don't. Using metrics to drive behaviors accelerates the pace of change. And you can use a dashboard to share with your employees how the company and they are doing. And actually, that's that's one of my action items that I'm really going to challenge you to do is to create a, a dashboard. And it can show like what your growth rate is. It can show how your employees are doing, like how their sales are, like if you have a sales department, um, what their uh, sales conversion rates are, what their client retention rate is for client for maybe employees who are working with their their clients. What is their client retention rate? What is their client turnover rate? Just to give you some examples. And what I want you to start doing with this is I want you to start driving your culture based off of these KPIs, like have them determine everything. So for instance, if we are we have a, a weekly team meeting or a monthly team meeting, I want this dashboard shown every single time you have a meeting and to go over them. And then it can show like who the top salespeople are, like what, what their, um, what their conversion rate is, like how many uh, clients they're reaching out to, um, or how many new leads they're, they're converting, how many new leads are coming in, um, what, how much money they're bringing in, um, what their, what their value is. Um, so not only you can keep track of how much money each person is worth basically. Um, so, and by, and, and determine um, what KPIs each employee should have. So it might be different by department. So sales department might be looking at um, what their conversion rate is and what their um, client value is. And, and then like, if you have say people who are say the lawn care business, you're out there, like you should be able to know how much money each client brings in, like what their um, value is and what, you know, if they have any turn turnover rate, like what the retention rate is. So determine um, like the HR, HR department, like, you know, how well they're bringing in talent, how fast they're bringing in talent. And then you can have them listed in order uh, by department in your company of how well everyone's doing. That way they can easily see, oh, I'm the top of the pack. I'm doing awesome. Or, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm in the middle or I'm at the bottom. Like I really need to pick it up um because I want to improve like I I'm tired of being at the, the bottom one listed in my department every single week so and how to bring this into the culture is basically say say instead of everyone gets a flat three percent raise every year um no let's let's do it based off of performance so say you're able to give out say a 15 percent raise um accumulative over the staff you the high like um the, the the best employee, the highest one in that department, they're going to get the highest raise. Uh, so say out of the 15%, give them a 5% raise. And then all the middle people get a 3% raise. And, you know, maybe the person, the last one gets a 1% raise or they don't get a raise at all because they're not performing, right? Um, so use it to give out raises. Use it to give out bonuses. Um, if you, your, your company buys vehicles for your employees um, and they have a, company vehicle. Well, you know what? The top person in that company, um, say in the sales force or the, or even at the workforce, say you have the, the lawn care business and they, they have the highest retention rate. They have this, this, this group of two, because remember they go out in pairs. Um, 
they they have the highest customer value between their group. Well, you know what? When we buy a new vehicle, they get the new vehicle instead of like whoever's most companies are like, oh, well, they have the oldest vehicle, so they're going to get a new vehicle. No, the company, the, the clients, the, the employees who are doing the best they're at the top, they get the new vehicle. And then all the all the vehicles oldest to new, they shift down. And the, the person who is the lowest on that list, they get the oldest vehicle. They get the, the piece of crap that's driving around. Right. And um, so that's the way you can do company vehicles. If there's promotion opportunities, obviously the ones who are at the top get it. And then if he, it comes to a time where things are going really bad and, and you may need to potentially lay off or reduce your, your force, um, the person at the bottom, it's obvious they get let go first. And it makes the unemployment so much easier. Like it, you've been showing them every single week or month how they're doing. And it's obvious that, I mean, there's nothing even to contest. Like you did it based off of performance here. So um, I really going to challenge you to take, take, start doing this, having this, this dashboard that you're openly sharing to your team on how everyone's doing and to start using this. All right. So to be able to wrap this up, I want you to be actionable from today's, today's training. So ask yourself, how will you be able to tell if your business is winning? Take three KPIs to start measuring at first, because you, you're, it's going to take you a while to get used to this and, and start implementing this, but start with three. And then as you get used to keeping track of them, go ahead and be like, oh, I remember I really did want to keep track of this KPI and add it slowly. One minute. All right. And then have um have kpis for your employees that's the last thing so that they can see how they're doing if they want to start improving they can um but that is what i recommend for you to start doing in your business or start implementing if you're a manager and again i really enjoyed doing this training for you if you have any questions at all this is how you can contact me again my name is kristen gunderson my phone number is there and my email address is there um, thank you again.